to take a look today at uh, some of the things that have to deal with parallelograms. So I'm going to get some people that either have been absent, caught up, or if you just want sort of a little refresher of what have we been doing with parallelograms. We're going to basically going to go over the properties of a parallelogram, then we're going to look at some problems that involve parallelograms where we're solving for x, solving for y, things like that, and then uh, we'll look at a, a few proofs. So the first thing is, what is a parallelogram? So I'm just going to off to the side over here, I'm going to draw typically what a parallelogram looks like. <clears throat> it doesn't have to be that way. Whoa, watch it. Throwing pens now. It doesn't have to be that way, uh, but typically this is how it's drawn. You know, picture a rectangle sort of pushed over at the top. And the basic definition of a parallelogram is it's a quadrilateral, four-sided closed figure, with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. Now, we're going to list those. These are, when we talk about these properties, that's a basic definition. We're going to list these off to the side over here, and we're just going to put parallelogram implies opposite sides parallel. That's a definition. Now, the next one is a theorem, which talks about, well, if the opposite sides are parallel, then I'm going to be able to prove that a parallelogram implies the opposite sides are also congruent. Now, how would we do that? So, and again, let me just use a different colored marker to show this, but that basically means that this side and this side are the same length, this side and this side are the same length. Now, how would we go about proving that? Let me just down here real quick do it, and then we'll uh, erase this. So if I knew that it was a parallelogram, just like we have up there, opposite sides are parallel. We just came out of the chapter of the unit, which talked about congruent triangles. Oops. So if I look at this with the parallel lines, I've got parallel lines going this way, I've got the Z shape, so I've got a pair of alternate interior angles going that way. With the parallel lines and the diagonal that I drew in, I also have a pair of alternate interior angles going the other way. So between these two triangles, I have an angle to an angle, another angle to another angle. We have the shared reflexive side. So we would be able to prove these triangles congruent by angle, side, angle, and I have the same thing in the other one, angle, side, angle. Once we have triangles congruent, what has always been the next step following congruent triangles? CPCTC. So CPCTC, again, was that acronym. I uh, can't really say it's an acronym because it's not a word, right? what it says, but CPCTC stands for Corresponding Parts of Congruent Triangles are Congruent. The types of parts a triangle has are angles and sides. So we'd be able to use CPCTC to say, all right, this side and this side are congruent to one another because they correspond. This side and this side are congruent to one another because they correspond. Well, hold on one second. Is that you, Colin? All right, sorry about that. We're interrupted a little bit, uh, helping somebody out with some home remodeling stuff. But anyway, so we've got triangles congruent. We could use CPCTC, corresponding parts of congruent, triangles congruent, to get those sides congruent, which gives us opposite sides congruent. I could also, in this case, the way we just proved them, use CPCTC to get these two angles equal to each other. Just like we have opposite sides, we have something in a parallelogram called opposite angles. And we would be able to show that both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. So parallelogram implies opposite angles congruent. So we've got opposite sides parallel. We've got opposite sides congruent, opposite angles congruent. And then the last one, and again, these are all theorems. We could prove these. But the last one deals with a parallelogram implies Diagonals bisect each other. Now, what does that mean? So now, I don't want to crowd that one up, so let me just draw a different one down here. If I drew in both diagonals, the diagonals bisect each other. Now, what does it mean? What does it mean if a segment bisects another segment? It intersects that segment at its midpoint. If that's the midpoint of this side, that midpoint would divide that segment into two congruent parts. So I'm going to be able to show that that segment's congruent to that segment, and that segment is congruent to that segment. 
So these are the four properties of parallelograms. If they tell us something is a parallelogram, we can use any one of these four to imply any one of these four outcomes. So what we're going to take a look at now is we're going to put up on the board some problems that involve uh, either solving for an angle, solving for a side. We'll look at one that might be a systems of equation problem, and I think we're going to look at one that's going to be a quadratic equation problem. Let me go ahead and pause that right here. We'll come back and we'll throw in those uh, problems.